Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the NBA front office show. We've got a ton to get into today. Keith, we took yesterday off saying we'll let, it, <laughs> we'll let a little bit of news build up so we can have a bigger show on Friday. And here we are going, oh, my goodness. Like I didn't expect this much to build up. We've got so much to get into. Got to love the NBA. There's a lot of things that went down from a lot of different teams. So we've got we've got a packed show today, Keith. Absolutely. Strap in, go get yourself your end of the work week <laughs> drink or snack or whatever you do to relax. And we'll, we'll take you through all the latest news. Part of what's happening is a lot of uh, team executives. So general manager, mm-hmm. president of basketball operations, whatever the title of the main decision maker in the front office is, they've started to already do their media availability over Thursday and Friday. For the most part, coaches and players are going to connect with the media on Monday on the traditional media day. Mm -hmm. Training camps, of course, start Tuesday around the league. So so that's why we're starting to get a lot of these updates. Uh, But teams are still uh, fast and furious filling out their uh, training camp roster. So we get a lot of camp signings to run through. We've got some injury updates to run through and then just a couple of news and notes things. So hang in there with us. Have a little bit of fun here to end the week and we promise we'll get your weekend off to a good start. That's right. Let's start with, let's knock the injuries out first because that's the not fun part. You don't want to hear about players being injured already, but it's important that we get into it. And I want to start with the Chicago Bulls, Patrick Williams out four to six weeks with what's being termed a severe ankle sprain. Now, I don't know what grade ankle sprain that is. You know that how sprains are typically rated by grade, but that's not a great yep. sign, and that puts the beginning of the season very much in jeopardy for him. Definitely not what you want here. A young player that I was really expecting a lot out of this season is going to get off to a bit of a rough start, though. Yeah, going to play a huge role for that Bulls team Mm -hmm. because he's going to start alongside DeMar DeRozan. Let's just call them forwards, right? There's not really going to be a small forward, power forward. And that's going to be the case with a lot of teams. I've been doing a lot of depth chart work and projections and those kind of things over the last couple weeks, just getting ready for the season. And it's we're just kind of in the world of the forward now. There's not necessarily a lot of... uh, uh, fours and threes anymore there's yeah. there's if anything it's almost like there's ones wings and fives now that's it's really kinda pretty interchangeable between the two and the four on a lot of teams but yeah williams is out now one piece of uh, i guess light at the end of the tunnel or good mm-hmm. news here that we can give is rob schaefer uh who covers uh, chicago sports he found out, talked to the team to get clarity because they said it happened in an off-season workout. The good news is this happened about nine days ago. So their four- to six-week timeline was from when the injury originally happened. So probably still going to miss all of camp and preseason and the beginning part of the regular season because we're less than than a month out Mm -hmm. now from the season tipping off. But hopefully he'll be back you know, maybe late October, early November at the very latest. Well, and on a Bulls team that we we don't feel like they have great depth. And yeah. so on a Bulls team that already is kind of hurting in terms of depth, now you're starting the season without Patrick Williams. You're also going to be without Kobe White, who isn't going to be back until November, still recovering yep. from shoulder surgery. Did have his, his option picked up by the team. And, and so that was, of course, expected, but he won't be sure. there either i know the bulls are one of my must watch teams one of the teams i'm really excited to check out and see what they look like kind of disappointing to hear that they're going to be down two pretty key guys early on yeah and i think with kobe white you're hoping if you're the bulls that he's your sixth man he's going to come in and be that scoring guard off your bench and do all those things because he's clearly not going to start over lonzo ball or zach levine uh with him being out too it maybe changes the way they treat their opening lineup because you might have seen them go with Alex Caruso in the starting five and they may still do that but with white out you may want Caruso on the bench to give you at least a ball handler off the bench it's going to be really important for Billy Donovan to stagger I think DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine as much as possible so you have at least one of the real playmakers and then just these injuries put a little bit more on Lonzo Ball where he's going to probably have to do a little bit more than maybe was projected to have to do early on just because of these injuries but the good news is neither one of these things is expected to be long term white's expected to be back sometime Mm -hmm. in november which that could be you know right two weeks into the season or so uh and then williams hopefully right on the heels of that or maybe even it beats white back and so you know the bolts will be at relatively full strength but their depth will be tested a little bit early out of the gates especially in the backcourt 
Well, and, you know, there was a Zach Levine comment recently. It was something to the effect of, you know, this season's going to mean a lot both for the Bulls and for himself. He's heading yeah. into free agency the following offseason. Probably, I mean, not the start that you want to get off to, but not the sure. end of the world either. They'll still have plenty of opportunity to find success this season. I do wonder, does this increase the chances uh, that Stanley Johnson makes the team out of camp? He's there on a camp contract right now. Mm -hmm. He's a guy, so it's it's, uh, Tyler Cook, Stanley Johnson, Matt Thomas, and Ethan Thompson. Uh, So I just kind of got to wonder if... uh, Patrick Williams being out increases Stanley Johnson plays similar ish role as far as a more defensive minded forward. Uh, could he stand to have a better shot at making this team out of camp? Cause they do have one open roster spot against their standard contracts right now uh, versus their camp deal. So, so we'll see, but it's uh, certainly a little bit behind the eight ball to start the year. Absolutely. And now the, the Atlanta Hawks as well, they're dealing with some injuries. Yeah. Well, a lot of injuries. Clint Capella, uh, got a PRP injection on his Achilles. That does not sound great. Bogdan Bogdanovich yeah, is dealing scary. with the knee still from last season. Kevin Herter dealing with an ankle issue, but they're expected uh, to be there for the start of the season, but probably not at least at first for training camp. Yeah, same with DeAndre Hunter, too. Yes. So that's three starters, Capella, Bogdanovich, and, and Hunter, and then Herter's kind of become this team's six ish man when, when they're all there and healthy. Uh, so that, that was, those are some major guys. And then let's not forget Anyaka Kongwu mm-hmm. also uh, on the bench. So early on up front, it's Gorgie Jang. This is why they said they signed him. Uh, they knew Okongwu was going to be out and then knew they were going to take it easy with Capella early on. So they wanted to have Jang in there, but John Collins, uh, then they, that's kind of it up front. Uh, Jalil Okafor was brought in for camp, so maybe he has a shot mm-hmm. again. Much like the Bulls, this team does have one open roster spot that they could give to somebody out of camp if they wanted to and, and get rid of a non-guarantee. So a little bit of work there. But it's what makes me nervous is even though they're saying other than a Kongwu who's going to be out till sometime between he's shooting for December, the team says January, they're saying all the rest of these guys will be back and ready to go by the start of the regular season but again that's only like three weeks away at this point which is crazy (laughs) (laughs) but it that makes me nervous for a team that that i think we've got really high expectations for after their their run last year absolutely absolutely i mean look somebody needs to talk to adam silver clearly he forgot to go into settings and turn off injuries (laughs) because this this is a little ridiculous like we haven't even started we're not even in camp yet and we're already talking about all of these injuries. Uh, speaking of which, Kawhi Leonard, the Clippers, just within the last hour, said uh, that they don't know whether or not Kawhi Leonard will be back. And that, I think, is going to be their answer for most of the season, right? They're just, even yeah. if they know, I think they're not going to say that they that they know. Kind of like we I saw agree. it in the playoffs last year. They, they knew Kawhi Leonard's knee was done. They knew he wasn't coming back, and they kind of pretended like he might come back. So the Clippers weren't certainly not forthright with that information. Obviously, there was a little bit of gamesmanship going on there back during the playoffs. But right now, the Clippers, they don't know for sure whether or not Kawhi will be will be back. Even if they have a strong inkling that he's going to be either back or not back, they're not going to put that expectation out there just yet. They're just going to say, you know, we're not sure exactly what this is going to look like. There's the potential maybe for him to come back around playoff time, but I have a feeling sure. where the Clippers are sitting in the standings, how things are looking with the team, that will probably be a factor in terms of whether or not he actually suits up this season. Yeah, I think barring something really unexpected, we both think this is probably still a team that at worst is in the play-in. Yeah. They've still got plenty of depth. They've still got some pretty good top-end talent with Paul George and a couple other guys for their positions. But, I, yeah, I'm with you. I think if you could look at it and say, all right, you know what, we can be seven and – the team sitting in two, we feel like we could take them. And Kawhi really is ready without pushing him overly hard. Yeah, let's go. Let's get him back out there. But if they're looking at it and saying, uh, it's going to be a fight to just get through yeah. the play in, and maybe that's not even worth it, and you know this and that, then he may just say, you know what, take the year off. Because their, their thing now is, too, this is, it's important to remember, 
this is now a long-term investment yes. too. So you're you're no longer sitting in a position where it's, all right, well, let's wait. They've got two more years uh, under contract and then a player option on a third year beyond this year. Uh, so all the way potentially through 24, 25, which that probably takes you through the best years of Kawhi's career. It coincides uh, with their new arena. Left. So you're, you're – exactly. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, puts them again back on uh, even footing with Paul George. Uh, is their their contracts are set up very similarly, actually, basically the same, the exact same money, and then both with player options on that last year. So you're not going to do anything to rush him back if if it's just a you know shot in the dark of maybe maybe we could make something happen here. But if he's ready, then he's ready, and in you go. And I gotta wonder is it, does this give him a chance to? continue to work on that quad and try to get that strengthened and get, get the necessary rest for that, that he needs to have and just has him in a better place uh, when he does come back, even if that is with the 22, 23 season. And speaking of uh, LA teams the, from the Lakers side, Rob Palenka did mention yesterday that as of this point, there are no known injuries heading into training camp, which of course is great news for a team that dealt with a tidal wave full of injuries pretty much all of last <laughs> season. So nothing heading into training camp. So that is good. And that's, and that, well, one thing with that too, mm-hmm. that's important with an older team. Yes. You don't want to start off when you're older with stuff bothering you now, because chances are it's, it lingers. Uh, it <laughs> things, lingers. things only go faster yes. from here. <laughs> there's, there's no, uh, no, nowhere to go. And, and that is why somebody asked me um, the other day on a radio appearance I did, or it might've been a podcast, but I, I do occasionally commit pod on you, Trevor. I, I know that's shocking for you to hear, um, but it is uh, I'm not mad. I'm just me, disappointed. Like, do you think Keith. <laughs> <laughs> now you sound like my parents. Um, it, it, they, someone said, does it surprise you at all that they don't have any young developmental guys on the roster? And I said, it really doesn't. They're trying to win a championship in the next two years while they have LeBron under contract. And I'm not saying LeBron's leaving or anything, but these next two years, they want to win a championship. So if they have two or three injuries, they don't want to be turning to Joe kid out of college. Who's just kind of learning his way. And I think they very much know that no matter what happens in two years, but if LeBron leaves or retires, they're resetting anyway yeah. in a big way. Their whole salary structure is set up so that it's basically AD under contract after that. They maybe THT. We'll see where that goes. So they're set up to reset this in a huge way anyway. And they may even do that even if LeBron says, you know, I'm still going to keep playing. It may be time to still hit that reset button and and uh, rebuild around those two again on the fly. Yep. So, yeah, it doesn't shock me at all that they don't have a young developmental guys on this team. And, and I know they've got the two-way guys, but that's sure. that's a different thing. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, the closest thing they have is, is uh, Horton Tucker. And Malik he's Mo- a guy that they paid – and expect to be a rotation player for them. Yep. Yeah, in fact, the, they mentioned that uh, in the, the press conference. In fact, uh, Frank Vogel mentioned this too. Both Frank Vogel and Rob Blinka both said they're expecting THT to take over Alex Caruso and Contavious uh, Caldwell Pope's role as a perimeter defender. So they are going to be looking for big contributions out of him. Other than that, they are pretty much leaning, on the, uh, leaning on the older players on the roster this season. Yeah, um, speaking, yeah they need that out of him. Speaking of Alex Caruso, uh, it was also mentioned by Rob Palenka that the Lakers made an aggressive push to land Caruso, to bring him back, but that he chose to be a Chicago Bull. Now, that that is contrary to what we've heard before, that the Lakers didn't really bother to counter the Bulls' offer, that Caruso had presented a couple of different options to the Lakers, just matching the offer from the Bulls, three years, $37 million, or he would have been okay with doing a two-year deal at $30 million. The Lakers said, no, we're not even going to bother countering that's one story that's out there Palenka now saying we made an aggressive push to try to bring him back again define aggressive but it does sound like the Lakers did want him back to some degree but what the Bulls offer him just beyond what the Lakers were willing to do and that makes sense I mean as it stands right now this team's 17 million over the luxury tax yeah. line if you had Caruso back that you're you're north of 20 over because yes, he would replace one of the minimum salary guys, but still that's 7 million or so more, 6 million or so more. So north of 20 million over that starts to get to be a questionable amount. I don't I mean, you know, we can, 
poke fun and make jokes and all that stuff, but for any ownership group. And we saw the Clippers do a salary clearing trade and their owner could probably buy another two or three teams yeah. and be just fine. Um, so yeah, it, it's that you get to that number and it just starts to feel a little uncomfortable. It also limits what you can do later if you need to make moves in the off season and those kind of things. So it, it doesn't surprise me that, that, it, that might have got a little little rich for their blood and honestly i don't have a huge issue with it i know he became a huge fan favorite there and he did play well and earned his role and all that but i, I think the lakers are, are fine with what they did it, it's not if that becomes the difference between winning and losing a championship he probably had some more problems yeah yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, they do have two open roster spots. They have confirmed that they are not going to use their 15th roster spot. Instead, they're going to save that for the midseason buyout market. Keith, we've talked about this before. That's the difference between signing a 15th player now when you're in the luxury tax, paying that player all the way through the season, waiving that player midway through and probably still pay, paying them because they'd be a guaranteed yep. contract, <laughs> and then signing somebody else for a veteran minimum deal midway through the season, you're talking about, I mean, over $10 million and there's no reason to really do that. So they're not going to sign anybody for that 15th spot. They are going to sign a 14th player. They have to. Uh, James Ennis was recently bought, brought in for a workout, according to Jovan Bua of The Athletic. We also know they've brought in guys like Kenneth Fareed, even Monte Ellis. Apparently they've kicked the tires on Monte Ellis to potentially be an option. <laughs> Isaiah Thomas is another name that's been out there. Darren Collison uh, was rumored to be wanting a training camp invite. A lot of names swirling around this final roster spot for the Lakers. So they are aiming to try to fill that spot before training camp starts, which is coming up on the 28th. So we should hear who gets the final spot on the Lakers roster anytime now. Yeah, we're seeing guys come off the board. We're going to talk about a couple mm -hmm. here in the next couple of minutes. So go get James Ennis. He's of the, all those names you just mentioned. He's the guy who I think fits a need Agreed. for this team and is the best player. Uh, of that group. Now, if Isaiah Thomas really looks as good as reportedly he has in this workout tour, because we heard good things out of these Lakers workouts he did, we heard good things out of the Warriors time that he spent. If he really looks as good, well, then he's clearly the best player, but they don't need another guard. They, they've got enough yeah. enough guys at the guard guard line. Now you need another wing and a wing shooter. Now Ennis has always been, I can tell you, having covered him the last couple of years here in Orlando, he's always been a little overrated as far as being a shooter. Yeah. This is not Kyle Korver, uh, knocked down Doug McDermott, uh, JJ Redick, Ray Allen. Like people get a little crazy. He's not that, but still he's got pretty good size. He can kind of hold zone two through four uh, against the right kind of guys. And he can shoot. He's just, he's just not going to be, he's not going to be someone you put out there and he doesn't bend the defense necessarily his way, but he's probably going to be working with more open shots than he's ever gotten in his career outside of the little bit of time he spent in Houston playing with James Harden. Uh, but you know, he should get plenty of open looks and, and, I think that makes sense too, because if they really are committed to this AD at the five uh, group, uh, group things where, where he's a five, you need more mm -hmm. wings. Yep. You, you need just more guys you can put out there on the way. Yeah. And I think he makes sense. Six, 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 uh, 11 wingspan. I mean, and not a lockdown defender or anything like that, but he gives you at no. least the physical profile of a guy who could, you know, play 10 minutes against Jimmy Butler in a game and not get completely annihilated. Right. Like that's, that's, that's what yeah. you're looking for uh, out of that position. Let me ask you a question before we move off yeah. this. Does it get to a point where they have too many guys though that need to play and are going to want to play? Like I mentioned, I was doing depth chart mm -hmm. work. It gets a little funky if you do use AD at the five, especially to open games. Because then probably one out of Drummond and Jordan, probably not playing very much. Or Howard. not Drummond, Howard. Uh, Howard <laughs> and Jordan. Sorry, sorry, Lakers fans. That was a that was a faux pas. I, I, <laughs> I fully admit it. Uh, as as the uh, uh, self proclaimed uh, uh, world's uh, least uh, Drummond fan, um, Howard and Jordan probably not going to play right. Mm -hmm. And and you're probably at the point where Howard probably maybe not on both ends of back to backs or maybe only give them 10 minutes or may, maybe that's what it is. Maybe Roy Davis plays 35 minutes a night and you know, 25 or at the five. And then that gives you, that's how you get to the other minutes is you just split them mm -hmm. between Howard and Jordan. But I was also looking at, I'm like, man, when I get to the end of the, the, the bench, like someone out of this group is just not playing very much. Rondo, Jordan, Bazemore, Howard, Nunn, Monk. 
because I feel pretty confident in Ariza is going to play because I think they need his defense. Yeah. I think Carmelo is going to play. And I think one of the bigs will play. And then I think Horton Tucker will play. And I, I'm already on the record saying I think there's a chance Wayne Ellington starts just because they need a shooter uh-huh. out there with, with that grouping. Um, but yeah, someone, hey, I don't know. They just, you're the Lakers guy. So I wanted to ask you, like, does it feel like you're maybe hitting that point? So we've already heard that Rondo's not going to be a night to night guy, that he's not going to be playing sure. every single night. And then he makes sense. Right. And then Wayne Ellington had a comment the other day that I thought was pretty revealing. And I, I'm paraphrasing, but he essentially said, look, there's we we understand we know that not everybody is playing every night that's that's not going to happen yeah. but we also know that guys are going to have to rest and so that's that's where you're going to see minutes get picked up so i my sense and we haven't heard anything official but my sense is that the lakers probably told these guys look you know we're going to have depth but we're going to need that net that depth so just plan on you know there's going to be some nights where certain guys maybe don't play but everybody's going to get their chances over the course of the season because we're going to be resting guys on you know any given night. Sure. So I think that's the way that's, they're approaching and, it. And that was kind of where my thought went to is, yeah, night playing 10, 11 guys, yeah. and then the guys who don't play on Tuesday will probably play on Wednesday, and that's just kind of, kind of how it goes. And The only guys I could see maybe looking at this and saying, eh, this really is not great if we don't play a lot are um, – Gordon Tucker, Monk, and none, just because yeah. they're all young enough to uh, still kind of want to show they can be out there. And the reality is, and I'm completely making this up because then I'll just use him because he was the last guy to join the party here. But if DeAndre Jordan started to chirp, see you later, DeAndre Jordan. Right. Bye. Yeah. You know, off you go. And that is where I do wonder, are right, you at Ennis? That now you've just had yet another guy who's going to want to play. Would you be better off bringing in someone like Cameron Oliver uh, who can do some stuff and is a little younger and it's a little easier to say, Hey, you're going to be at the end of the bench. It's, you know, that's just going to be how it is. But yeah, it just, it, I won't sidetrack us any further on that. We've got a lot of other stuff to get to, but just something that was running through my head as I was doing, doing work today. No. And it's, it's a concern and it's something that, uh, I mean, look, we always say that it's a problem, but it's a great problem to have. If you have too many players who deserve minutes, right as a coach but it is still something to manage um so i mean look that's that's going to matter on your last few guys when i when i was coaching right my teams when i was looking for the last few guys on my bench uh and i was making cuts i was always looking for before talent necessarily i was looking for who is it that's going to practice hard who is it that's that's not going to mind sitting out that is going to just put in the work and they're not going to pout about being on the end of the bench. And you know what i mean the lakers are probably looking at this in a similar way they've got to have the chemistry down they've got to make sure the guys are bought in even if they're on the bench um you did mention isaiah thomas and how good he has looked uh look good in lakers workouts look good in warriors workouts the lakers picked rondo over it the warriors apparently have picked avery bradley over isaiah thomas to jump to that uh avery bradley now we've talked about how the warriors probably need another point guard avery bradley not a traditional point guard in terms of ball handler a guy who sets up an offense but he can defend once so i think he's yeah. an interesting fit there and uh and could be a good defensive pickup for the warriors and they also added langston galloway yes. and another guy over uh um isaiah thomas as well and what's interesting with that warriors team is we've said this a handful of times is they do need another point guard because right now it's Stephen Curry, and that's kind of it. Chris Chioza, their two-way guy, is there. Uh, they're also going to bring in Jordan Bell uh, back. It feels like uh, Jordan Bell is just going to kind of keep shuttling on and off that roster for <laughs> years to come. But here's the challenge for the Warriors is they don't have a bunch of open roster spots. This team is sitting right now uh, with those guys. They'll be sitting with six guys that are really fighting for maybe two spots, maybe three spots uh, yeah, at best, depending on where this team wants to push their luxury mm-hmm. tax. Do they want to eat any of the guaranteed money uh, that they have on their books? Like, what does that look like? So it's just an interesting thing to look at. It's starting to seem like, are you, it, where, where are we going here with, with this? It, is Bradley really going to make the team? If he is at the expense of who is uh, Langston Galloway going to make the team? 
at the expense of who? Right. Uh, well, what does that look like? And none of these guys, it's also important to note, none of these guys are two-way eligible because you can have you can only be in your fourth year uh, for a two-way eligibility. So that starts to become a little bit messy as well. So just, again, one of those uh, training camp battles we're going to be keeping an eye on here uh, over the next few weeks. Yep, another team certainly to keep a, an eye on. And uh, you know what? I guess while we're on the Warriors, we might as well talk about it. Andrew Wiggins, uh, and we can throw Kyrie Irving into yep. the mix here question marks about how available these guys will be due to their vaccination status both guys not vaccinated currently and because of where they are in uh in gold state and then in brooklyn uh that could create some problems moving forward for for both teams yeah so the city of san francisco the uh I don't know if it's the state of New York or just New York and Brooklyn. I don't know how all this works. So I apologize. This could be a county thing too, as well. Uh, so some like here in Florida, a lot more of our government is driven county wise than city wise, but wherever it is that the Warriors, Nets and Knicks play, whoever is jurisdiction over that, their guidelines, laws, mandates, call them what you will is you have to be vaccinated to work in in those buildings at those mega events and those kind of things uh, for your employer. Now, what's interesting with those guys is with those locations, rather, is they can't hold visiting players to that because they are not uh, beholden to working on behalf of that employer mm. uh, right there. So that that is kind of weird to me. It is I don't, weird. I, last I checked it, I don't think uh, COVID or really any disease checks uh, who your employment status before it uh, decides to infect you, <laughs> but that's a whole other conversation we could have, and that's quite frankly a podcast we don't do. Um, but the reality is this is a thing. So we, without saying get vaccinated, don't get vaccinated, that is a personal decision that you need to make for yourselves. Um, we're fairly certain we know Andrew Wiggins is not vaccinated uh, based off of his own comments and based that yeah. it has been uh, put out there to at least a handful of members of the media that he'll be doing individual workouts only. He can't be in there with the entire team. And that also means he can't play in home games uh, for the Warriors, which that's 41 missed games staring him in the face. And He's an important player for that team. Mm -hmm. We can all joke and laugh about his contract and he's overpaid and overrated and all these other things, but he's become a pretty good player for this team. Uh, Kyrie Irving, we don't have knowledge fully. It's been reported by a handful of people that he's not vaccinated. Um, having covered Kyrie Irving, uh, if you ask him that question, you're probably going to get about a 30-minute answer and maybe <laughs> not get to the end result of it he's just he's a very very intelligent guy but he just when he wants to talk about certain things he does and when he doesn't want to he's really good about not talking about him but it's the same boat if he's not vaccinated he can't play in nets home games so guys we the last thing trevor and i want to do after last season is track vaccination no. statuses and covid uh, absences and all this other stuff but the reality is these are important players on very good teams and it's it's going to be a story until it's not a story so we're we're going to continue to give updates and we'll we'll see where this goes and how this evolves over the next uh, few weeks because again we're only a few weeks from opening night and you know the warriors uh, you know I, I think they have a home game uh, they want to say the second or third night of the season mm -hmm. so it's definitely something where we 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 need to cover yeah absolutely it's going to be something to keep an eye on how the nba handles this what what this ends up looking like will be interesting to see as the season uh, kicks off here. Uh, you know what? And the the wake of Gerson Rosas and his dramatic ouster in in Minnesota, uh, the Mavericks followed that up. Bob Volgaris out in Dallas. There were some rumors about some issues between him and Luka Doncic, which, I mean, <laughs> you're probably not going to win going up against the franchise guy and Luka, but uh, the Mavs do make a move here and move on. Yeah, and there was reports he didn't get along great with the former front office mm -hmm. either, that he, he was really kind of Mark Cuban's hire. Now, we'll we'll find out eventually. Mm -hmm. uh, he did have a humorous tweet after where he said, now I can read uh, these stories about, you know, hiding out, scouting Luca when the rest of the world was scouting him anyway or something along those lines. So clearly he's uh, – getting in some shots on his mm -hmm. way way out the door but yeah he, he's out and it was an interesting hire to begin with uh if you don't know his history he's a guy who uh became known because he was a gambler who made a ton of money uh betting on nba games because he uh is very uh, used a very statistic based approach and one of the things that he was uh 
I don't want to say fully first on, but he was very early on was uh, referee tendencies. Yeah. So he would know, you know, okay, these referees call a lot of fouls. I'm going to bet the over in this game and those kind of things and, and stuff like that. So that's where we're at. He's no, no longer a member of that front office really kind of a, it sounds like a full house cleaning there yep. in Dallas. So uh, what went on is they, they uh, rebuild their front office and coaching staff and everything else and got their star player resigned. And then another Mavericks news, Chris Haps Porzingis yes. came out and said he wanted to trade, uh, but has decided to come back and just get it get it going with a fresh start uh, in, in Dallas. So that is a new that's coach. Interesting. Now, you can want all the trades you want, but when you make over thirty million dollars a year and uh, you're questionable at you know your playing ability and availability health wise, you're you can ask for all the trades, but you're probably not going to get them. But yeah, we're we're gonna see where he uh, how, how he comes back. I will say he was pretty good in the bubble um, before yeah, he got hurt. Right. He he was playing really well. It looked like he kind of figured some stuff out with Luca. And I'm not gonna give up on Porzingis uh, j- just yet. You know, seven foot three. He's only 26. Too. I think it Man. feels like he's older because he's been around so long. Because this is year number seven for him, but he's only 26. So so let's let, let let's see. And let's hold him to it that you're coming back ready to go and a different player and hopefully he does. And, and if he does, that kind of changes the ceiling for this Mavs team. Well, he, he bore the brunt of the criticism for the Mavs ouster in the playoffs. Yeah. And I think he was just in a bad yeah. matchup. I think for most of the season, he put up pretty good numbers for the Mavs. Sure, you can question fit and things like that. But, oh, I, I think he's getting a disproportionate amount of the of the blame and maybe he was feeling the, the heat a little bit on that. And, and hopefully he does have a bounce back. And he's got, you know, a new coaching staff coming in. Hopefully that is just, it's the the fresh start that he needs. And we'll see a better yep. season out of Kristaps Porzingis. That's uh, the ideal if, situation if there. If not, we'll find out how easy it is to move $33.8 million <laughs> next <That's right>. year. <laughs> that's right. Uh, Manu Ginobili. Yeah. He's, he's back. Special advisor with yeah. the San Antonio Spurs. Gotta love that guy who... I mean, he was so much fun to watch. Uh, I always, I've, I'm a sucker for for left-handed players too. So it was always great just seeing how crafty <laughs> he could be and and the different angles he could get and everything. Get into that left hand. So Manu Ginobili back as a special advisor for the Spurs. Great to see that. Yeah, and I, you know, I like the idea too that it sounds like he's going to do some on court work, and that team has a ton of young guards mm-hmm. and. If you want to learn craft of how to score and do things, this is a uh, there's not a better guy to learn from than Manu Ginobili. Looking at this Spurs roster, they might even just make the on court work in game work. Like just just give them a jersey, put them out. It's not going to be worse than what you've got out there. Wow. Sorry, the Man, Spurs harsh. The Spurs roster is it's not very exciting right now when I'm looking at it. They're not a team that's <laughs> high up on my list of like must watch teams it's just kind of a boring roster i feel like to be honest though when they were winning and been ripping off 50 win seasons and yeah and finals runs i don't know how many people are like man i love you know getting into basketball junkies i think we like them but i don't know how many general fans i know i have friends who love the nba and are like oh the spurs you know, they're yeah. just kind of boring like I'd, I'd rather watch somebody else so uh just you know i, I don't know uh I'm interested. I, I'm interested to see how it all comes together there. But I, 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 I write. I used to write this every year for Real GM back when I was there. I would write a one reason to be excited to watch every team in the league, and I would come up with at least one. And I'll be honest. I think people know I tend to be a little bit more optimistic and excitable about basketball. Mm-hmm. It wasn't very hard for me to come up with a reason for every team in the league. Now. By the time February rolls around, there's a handful I'm not overly excited to put on my TV uh, at night. That's fair. That's certainly fair. Um, speaking of excitable, Luca Garza signs a two two way deal with the Pistons. Yeah. He was so much fun in the summer league. Like he he was so fired up on just about every single play. Like everything he did. It was like it was game seven of the NBA finals. He had like that level of intensity. So he was a lot of fun to watch and actually was was pretty effective out there. So I think this is a nice move for Detroit. Yeah, it worked for him. He was on a two-way deal and now they've already converted him. That's a kind of a record pace to to put him on a two-year deal. Uh, there they had an open roster spot after their their trade. Oh, I missed a two-year deal. Oh, with that. Yeah, two-year deal from two-year. his two-way deal. Yeah, that's right. Yep. 
you know, he was on his two way. They converted it. Uh, well, ended it. Signed him now to a two year deal, which, which is great. This is mm -hmm. this is really cool. Cool to see this thing just usually happens sometime in January or so. Uh, but here it is happening at the beginning of training camp. But my guess is that was probably one where it was take the two way. And then if we open up a roster spot somehow, we'll bring you in on a, mm -hmm. on a uh, standard contract. And they did. And they, they stayed true to their word. So yeah. And they could use a little bit more front court depth. So, so yeah. I, I don't hate this for them. Big man can shoot from outside. I mean, offers yep. some physical presence in the in the paint as well. Isn't afraid to bang. So, yeah, we get to uh, learn like a little bit from Kelly Olenek. Not not a bad yeah. mentor for him as far as what he could be, but he's a little bit more physical uh, than Olenek. Uh, speaking of two way deals, the Grizzlies converted Eve Pons to a two way contract. Yep. They still have a lot of work to do, <laughs> though. They they also waived Ooh, Carson Edwards man. and Daniel yep. Oturu. Um, but two more still, guys what, who never put more, on a Grizzlies jersey. That's, that's <laughs> right. What's the count? We've got to be about a double well, digit at this at this point, right? I've got it. I'm gonna pull it and tell you right now. At least for okay. guys out there. So, so the the these four players are sitting on their salary cap sheet as dead money, but never okay. played for the team this year because clearly Marc Gasol had a long career there. But Marc Gasol, Rajon Rondo, Carson Edwards, Daniel Oturu. But they also had Patrick Beverly and mm -hmm. Juancho Hernan Gomez, uh, who they so, briefly so. had and shuttled off to other places as well. So, And they're going to cut at least one more guy because they're still plus one on uh, contracts. They did add Shaq Buchanan and Sean McDermott. Grizzlies fans will know those names. McDermott was a team was a two-way player with the team last year, and Buchanan's been with them in training camp a couple times and is a guy who uh, the, these are signings targeted at getting them to the Memphis Hustle um, in, in the G League. So I, I expect you to go check out a Hustle game. Uh, at some point you're 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 close enough you should be able to pull that off yeah i'll, I'll have to make sure that uh that i put that on my schedule there um which <laughs> no i mean no like in all seriousness though the g league games they are a ton of fun they they really are they're absolutely they're a blast yep. and i and i always I yep. enjoy them uh it's just it's a good time it's a good time and if you have an opportunity I've to go to a go couple of lakeland games yeah here, the Lakeland Magic, so Orlando's G League team. Lakeland's about halfway between Orlando and Tampa, so it's about 45 minutes or so away um, from where we live. It's a great time, too, to bring bring your family yeah. if you because the tickets are cheap. So you can get really good seats, cheap tickets, or generally in small gyms. Um, and they do a lot of fun stuff. It's like going to minor league baseball where it's, right. you know, it's, 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 it's less about the product on the field or floor. It's more about, you know, having some fun. And, and if you catch it on the right night and uh, – guy who's on contract happens to be down there on assignment or something you, you can you know use it as that as well yeah absolutely uh the 76ers they did something the 76ers <laughs> made a deal no it's not the ben simmons deal but charles bassey nope, i didn't play the siren i know so that's right the the, the, the simmons siren did not go off uh <laughs> charles life loved it in the comments they the did, video, they did. So i loved it that was great it was, a, it was a nice surprise <laughs> uh charles bassey gets a three-year deal with the 76ers fully guaranteed year one partial guaranteed year two probably non-guaranteed year three uh this was kind of the big the big mystery how this was all going to work work out we talked about this uh yep. a few shows ago about the standoff that these guys were were having the you know i mean a second round pick and charles bassey and uh, the 76ers were having trouble getting him signed. He was wanting certain guarantees, and ultimately they come to this to this deal. Three years with uh, a second-year partial guarantee. Yeah, I think this is good. This guy has a ton of talent. We'll see if he puts it together. Clearly, he's their, their uh, fourth, their third center, I guess. Paul Reed would probably still play over him as well if they needed to go really small, but Embiid and Drummond mm -hmm. ahead of him for certain, and then probably Reed and then Bassey. But my guess is he plays quite a bit for their G League team this year and is developing, but but we'll we'll see. But yeah, no, uh, no Simmons update for you guys today. Nothing new uh, on that front, except Doc Rivers continues to make the rounds uh, and uh, continues to say that they want him back. That That's the extent of it. But that, that's not new, so that doesn't, that's not siren work. No, no, it's it's not. It's not. I'm waiting for him to slip up one time and say we want our trade leverage. I mean, I mean Ben Simmons back. Like I think I'm <laughs> yeah, waiting right. for that to happen. At some point, it's it's going to. Uh, Keith, your your Celtics did a few things. Ryan Archidiacono uh, signs a camp deal, and 
Garrison yeah. Matthews also gets a deal. I'll tell you what, I like Garrison Matthews. He did some good things with Washington. I'm impressed by his ability yep. to shoot on the move. Um, like best case, you're getting kind of a JJ Redick light out of out of him. And so I, I kind of wonder if he's a guy who ultimately is going to stick somewhere. I want to note the Lakers guy compared Garrison Matthews to JJ Redick, not me. So before <laughs> people come for me, that was Trevor who said that. I'm talking about uh, skill yeah. set, just just skill set <laughs> wise. That's yeah. it. He can shoot. He plays really hard. He's actually a pretty good defender mm -hmm. too. He's been one of the better two way players probably in the history of the two way uh, deal. Not outside of like. The Lou Dork guys who clearly never should have been on a two-way and were yeah. converted into a standard deal. But a guy who really stuck it out on the two-way, he's been one of the better ones. And and so what I was told, because we kind of thought after all their wheeling and dealing that they'd gotten down to their 15 guys. They have 14 guaranteed contracts, Jabari Parkers on a, a very lightly guaranteed contract, only 100 k and then Jawan Morgan was in there on a, a, a non-guaranteed camp deal, which looks like that could could have been set up to be their other two-way player. It looked like they were done, but I was told that Archie Diacono, Garrison Matthews, and then Theo Pinson was another guy that they mm -hmm. added as well. That they're gonna get they're giving these guys real shots to make the team. It is still we're being told they're still going to bring in Luke Cornett at some point mm -hmm. uh, as well and bring him back. Uh, just, you know, that's probably one where they, they have an existing relationship with him now. So he can just kind of wait there off to the side until they make some other maneuvering. But as it stands right now, the, the roster is full. They're at their 20 guys and we'll see if, I, I think Matthews feels far more of a need as a wing shooter than uh, Archie Diacono or Pinson would for this team. Yeah. Pinson's kind of a big uh, ball handling uh, playmaker uh, where Archie Diacono's kind of a shooting guard, like a shooting point guard, um, you know, size, size guy. But clearly they're still on the lookout for more shooting and that's, Luke Cornette's calling card if he comes back is a big who can stretch the floor so we'll see well what they do they also haven't been afraid in prior years to eat a guaranteed salary if they really feel like that's the best way to do it is to bring somebody else on so guys like Bruno Fernando we'll see if he sticks at the end of the roster um been the other thing I was told too is Brad Stevens may not be done yet he may still be tinkering uh with, with, with this roster so I think they're gonna really take this down take a look at a lot of different guys and if nothing else handful of these guys they imagine their goal is that they go play for the main celtics of the g league and that's what we'll see is the cycling through of guys on contracts because that's kind of part of what happens at this time of year right right absolutely um there's a little bit of weirdness with the clippers so i'm going to save that for the last one let's get to the next one though Tar <laughs> Tarek black to the nuggets on a training camp yeah, deal back. great guy great guy i had an opportunity to interview him a few times when he was a laker very, very awesome, awesome guy. Undersized. Was during the dark. Age, yes, right? that was. Uh, but <laughs> uh, undersized center, but plays hard and uh, and competes at the basket. He's a guy who I don't know if he ultimately sticks with the roster or not. Has spent a lot of time playing overseas, but a good guy, competes hard on, on every end of the floor. He winds up being a fan favorite just because of how much energy he puts into every single play. Yeah, my guess is he's probably not going to stick around. They've yeah. got Jamichael Green, Jeff Green, uh, still have Bull Bull. They have Zeke Najee. That's a lot of bigs yeah. on that team. But my guess is they're bringing him in with the idea of, hey, beat these guys up a little bit over the next few weeks in camp. Uh, we'll have they, – they don't have their own G League team yet, so – so that that or actually, I take that back. The Nuggets do have their own G League team now. If I uh, let me make sure I'm saying this right, they do because they have the um, it's Phoenix and Portland who don't. Gosh, uh, Grand Rapids is the uh, is is the Nuggets G League team. So they do have a G League team, but we'll we'll see. You know if that's the direction he wants to go or not. But for right now, camp deal, and he'll he'll be there to kind of uh, do do some stuff. The Grand Rapids uh, Drive is is the Nuggets. Uh, they might have changed the name. I apologize. I'm I'm a little bit behind on my G League uh ness right now but uh but yeah it, it'll be interesting to see what they did but I, I think this makes some sense you know have him come in and and uh he'll, he'll beat up some guys and, and off they go all right and then last but not least jordan ford signed by the clippers hey, can, and then wait before we go to oh, that yeah. just i'm sorry i just wanted to uh touch um 
Uh, on the Wiggins thing again, oh. uh, there's a story from the San Francisco Chronicle that the city of San Francisco says Andrew Wiggins cannot play in Warriors home games if unvaccinated. Ooh. So that's official from the city. So, wow. so just a little, little, little more, you know, just kind of confirmation on that. Oh, one, good. Yes. Good to note. So there, there it is. So you could be without yeah. Andrew Wiggins for Warriors home games this season. Wow. Um, but as I said, uh, yeah. Jordan Ford, Clippers. Jordan Ford. Signs with the Clippers, and the Clippers say, "Congratulations, you're cut." <laughs> Keith, why Pretty does much, how does yeah. this make sense? Yeah. So what this, why this happens is what they do is they they sign these guys to like Jordan Ford, who has no years of service in the NBA. Uh, he was with the Clippers last year in in preseason briefly. Um, they bring them in and they sign them, and then they give them what's called an Exhibit Ten contract, mm-hmm. which often has language in it anywhere from 10 to 50 K if they then go and play for the G league team and stay with the G league for X amount of time. So in this case, Jordan Ford, what the Clippers are doing is bringing him in briefly to fill their last open roster spot. Then they wave him almost immediately. The next day is actually how this went down. They signed him one day, waved him the next day, and then he will, likely get that affiliate player language yeah. and then he'll get that bonus if he goes to the G League and stays in the G League. So you're going to see a lot of this happen over the next few weeks before rosters have to be finalized where teams might sometimes it's four or five guys they cycle through those last couple of spots. Each team is allowed to to declare four players who completed training camp with them as affiliate players, Mm -hmm. and then they basically get those rights to those players, and they can give them that bump in pay in the G League. Now, it doesn't give them any kind of rights to sign them later or anything like that. They're still NBA free agents. They can't call them up. They do beyond just like any other team could do. Uh, That's something I think we could maybe see changed in the next CBA. We'll see. Um, But right now, that's where that's at. So I think this is just – Standard business, but it looks weird to people. There was a guy, um, he replied to me, um, and I thought it was fun, was with the uh, – it's the 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 meme of um, Grandpa Simpson walking in. It's when he walks into the burlesque house. And then it turns right around. Earlier yeah. episodes. Yep. It, it turns right around and walks back out because he sees Bart working at the – Working uh, the door. At like the check-in desk yep. or whatever. So, yeah. So somebody did that, which is kind of probably how this went down. Um, but, yeah. But you're going to see this happen over the next couple of weeks. Where it can get fun is sometimes – Late in training camp, let's say a team does this with two, three days left before rosters have to be finalized. Another team's like, boy, you know what? I really like that guy. We want him on our G League team. They'll claim him off waivers, and then they'll waive the player because then it, the affiliate player rights revert to them because they had him last. Mm-hmm. So you could see some games get played with this stuff uh, down the line. It's fun for us. I don't know how fun it is for the players. I'm sure it's fine as long as they get their money in the end and uh, get to play play basketball. But yeah, and then the Clippers then proceeded to fill that 20th roster spot with Amir Coffey. He's coming back on another two-way contract. He's been there for a couple years on two-ways. This will be his last year that he's eligible uh, to play for them on a two-way deal. Uh, he'll be their second two-way player alongside Jay Scrub. So uh, Exhibit 10 contracts. Real players, Trevor. What's that? They make up uh, real players. I didn't make up real anything. players. <laughs> so it, I'm going to get you on one eventually. Uh, absolutely. There's going to be one that you're going to throw in and it's just going to be a totally made up, <laughs> made up name. And, uh, and I won't know that, but um, these exhibit 10 contracts, I like that you're able to incentivize a player to stick around in the G league. I think it just gives yep. the G league that much more legitimacy as a real option, because otherwise a lot of these guys are going overseas, right? They're going to get more money yep. somewhere else than what a traditional G league contract is going to give you. And so the Exhibit 10 contract gives you a little bit of a way around that. And then making them an affiliate player helps as well to keep them in that team's system. So uh, it, it's a nice move, I think, what for teams. We used, what we used to see happen was they would give players up to 50K guaranteed on the, the NBA. And then the team would pay that out and take the hit on their side. Mm-hmm. And then the player would go make their full G League amount and go from there. But what teams have started to do is they're just not taking the 50K and dead money on the NBA salary sheet yeah. anymore. Uh, very, very few deals like that signed this offseason. I think it's a sign of the times with the pandemic of we're just not going to invest the money that way. Uh, we'll, we'll still invest it and put some of the onus on them. Uh, then stay in the G League and be there versus 
uh, like Jordan Ford saying, hey, here's an offer in you know, Russia right. or China, jump over there. So, um, you know, just just something to kind of keep in mind uh, with that. But yeah, no, no one can get more than 50K guaranteed by a team and then still play for that team in the G League. That's just a, a rule uh, that they did because what they didn't want teams doing was, all right, yeah, we cut you for your full you know, $2 million contract. Yeah. Now go play for our G League team because that that's where teams with very rich ownership groups could really stack and load up their G League team. And then, then you start to get into, hey, don't sign with that team on a 10-day because we're going to bring you back up. And it gets real messy. So I think as we get to all 30 teams, have their own G League affiliate, and – uh, things get flushed out. I think we're going to see changes come to this G League process down the line eventually. Yeah, uh, maybe that'll come uh, sooner rather than later. But the G League, it's been growing, and it's been great to see this become yeah. closer and closer to being like a true minor league for the NBA. Yeah. Uh, Keith, that was a lot. That was a lot of stuff that that we got yeah, through today. Um, obviously, a lot of things going on. We've got media day coming up next week. We've got training camp starting up. Here we go. Here we go. Everything's going to start really flying. So we're, we're excited about that. Make sure you guys do subscribe right here to the NBA Front Office YouTube channel. Don't forget to ring the notification bell as well because we've got a lot planned for the start of the season here. It's going to be a lot of fun, so make sure you do subscribe. I think that's about it. I think we made it. We made it through I everything. I think that's it. Yeah, I think we made it. Yeah. We gave you guys a good long one. That'll get you through the weekend. Yep. You chunk it up and watch it in parts and everything else and tell a friend and go create four or five more accounts and watch it. That'd be great too. And <laughs> subscribe that way. But no, seriously, we, we really appreciate all the support. We're super, super excited and you know how great this is. So we're, we're uh, you know, we, we, couldn't be happier to be doing this where we're really having having a lot of fun with this. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how this weekend goes. I'm super busy with soccer, but if something major goes down, knock on wood, maybe Ben Simmons Simmons Siren. would be a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, the Simmons Siren will blare. We will make time uh, to record That's one right. way or another on that. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're excited. And then, yeah, we're getting into it with Media Day Monday. We get a lot more updates on players and teams and storylines out of that. And then it starts for real on Tuesday. So we can't wait. That's right. That's right. All right, everybody. Have a great weekend. Stay safe and see you.